Hi, this is Dave Ward from the Ward Law Firm, and we protect business owners facing divorce. And what I want to talk to you uh, about today uh, is something that most business owners faced with a divorce are going to have to deal with, uh, particularly if they don't have a pre or post nuptial agreement in place that covers their business, and that is dealing with business valuations. There are three primary ways uh, to value a business or three different approaches um, a forensic accountant or uh, certified divorce financial analyst is going to look to when they're trying to evaluate the, the true value of your business. And those three ways are the income approach, the market approach, or the asset approach. And each one of these looks at different sorts of things in order to come up with a valuation. And the one that you're going to see used more commonly than not in a situation where you're dealing with a closely held corporation uh, is the income approach. The income approach, basically what it does is it takes a look at the income, uh, the total income that's being generated for the business owner. And then what it does is it takes it and it capitalizes it. What does that mean? Well, what that means is if I had an asset and that asset had to produce the amount of income that the business is incoming, how much would that asset be? In other words, how much would that money be? Okay, how much money would it take to generate that? So what they'll do is they'll calculate all of the income uh, that is flowing to the business owner uh, and then use a capitalization rate to determine what that ultimate amount is and that capitalization rate will take into account a number of different things uh, including uh, in industry risk, risk related to size, uh, all, and any number of, of different things. There's actually a, a pretty extensive list of things that can be considered. But that's the one that, that you're going to see more often than not when you're dealing with a closely held corporation. The other two methods, um, there's the market method, that's number two. And the market method has to do with looking for comparable sales uh, that have occurred that you can get information about. The reason why this isn't usually very good for closely held businesses is because usually when you're dealing with the sale of a closely held business, the information related to that is not going to be public. In other words, it's not going to be available. So you're going to have a very, very hard time finding comparable sales. So for that reason, um, you're very, very rarely going to see anybody do a market type uh, calculation as to the, the value of a business. And the final one uh, is called uh, the asset-based approach. And the asset-based approach um, can apply to a number of closely held corporations where the business itself um, is more related to the value of the assets that are owned by the business uh, than it is to anything else. And sometimes what, what you'll see in that um, are situations where um, you have uh, the business owner is the primary driving force behind the income of the business. In a situation like that, when you sell that particular business, um, the presumption is you're not selling the owner with it, um, which means that the thing that's driving all of the revenue is no longer part of it. And in a situation like that, in certain businesses uh, where that's the case, the better valuation uh, in order to get an accurate assessment of what the business could likely sell for is to use an asset-based approach. And, and that, of course, is where they take a look at the value of all the assets. Um, and they may uh, include a small component of what's called goodwill, um, which comes from simply the name of the business. Uh, so those are our three methods uh, that we most commonly see for valuing businesses. If you're interested in talking about your business and your case, Call us at the number below and we'll set up a time to do a real case analysis with you where we'll go through and we're, we're going to review the facts, evaluate the legal issues that are in your case, analyze the strategies available to you, and help you create a list of next steps you can go on to. I'm Dave Ward from the Ward Law Firm and we protect business owners facing divorce.